Hello Silverolix! In this video, I will show you all of the tools stackers and precious coin collectors should have in their arsenal to detect fake coins and bars. I will show you 7 tools that can be used to test metals. 5 of them are not harmful to the pieces being tested, and 2 of them will damage them. This video will show you everything you need to know so you don't get scammed and purchase fake precious metals. For numismatic coins, it is a bit more complex and requires a lot of knowledge about the piece that you are trying to buy. Consulting an expert might be your best solution until you can learn all of the things to look for and be aware of. If this content is useful to you, I invite you to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I usually put out about 2 to 3 videos per week. Ok, so let's get comfortable and I invite you to take some notes during the video. This is an overview of each tool and method. I will make more in-depth videos for the more complex tools and methods. Method number one, acids. Acids, combined with a rough stone, can be used to test for gold, silver, and platinum. The method is very simple. You rub the coin against the stone so that you have a thick line of the metal on the stone and then apply the acid to it. The reaction of the acid will let you know if you have the wanted metal or not by changing color. This is an acquired skill and you need to know what to look for depending on the metal type and the purity. Many coin dealers use this method. The damage is minimum, but it should never be used on a valuable coin. I never use this because other methods are just as good and do not require you to use dangerous chemicals and damage the coins. Method number two, drilling and filing. This method is often used along method number one, but not always. The idea is to see the inside of the bar or the coin to make sure that it's the same metal inside. This is typically used with large bars over one kilogram to make sure that the core is also made of the precious metal. Here is an example of it being performed on a super large bar. So they simply drill through it and then test the metal from the core using the acids. Then they can melt it back down and put it back in the hole. For smaller coins, what they would normally do is file through the edge to see the inside. Method number three, magnets. This is the quickest and easiest method to use. All precious metal are non-magnetic. And even coins made with non-pure precious metals like 14 karat gold or 50% silver do not use iron or other magnetic metal as an amalgam. So if the coin or bar sticks to the magnet, you can be sure it's a fake. If the coin or bar passes the test, it doesn't prove that it's the real thing. The coin could be made of copper or other non-magnetic metal. But it's a good start before doing any more involved testing and I encourage you to always do this test. It literally takes only a second to do. A more precise test is either to use a magnetic slide or slide a magnet across the coin. I will make a more in-depth video on this method. Again, it's not 100%, but it's a bit more revealing. Method number four, measuring devices. This method requires you to know the exact dimensions of the coin or bar. This information is usually available online. The best tool to use for this is a digital caliper. These can be found on Amazon for about $20. There is a link in the description below. If the coin or bar is not of the correct dimensions, you can be pretty sure it's a fake. Usually the difference is in the thickness, but sometimes it could be in the diameter as well. In most cases, the coin or bar will be larger than the real thing because the replacement metals they use is not going to be as dense as the precious metal. If the coin is non-magnetic and passes this test as well by being of exact dimensions, only one test reminds for you to be sure it's real, and that's the next one. Method number five, the digital scale. To use this method, you will need a digital scale that is very precise. If you look at the label, it will show you the precision. Most food scales are precise to up to one tenth of a gram. This is not precise enough and should not be used. The more precise ones that you need can go up to one hundredth of a gram, 
and they usually have Troy Ounces settings as well as grams and other modes. To use this, you need to understand what the coin should weigh. For silver, the Troy Ounce is the base weight. Coins are usually 1, 2, 5 or 10 Troy Ounces. A Troy Ounce is 31.1 grams. You can see in the table here what would, that would translate in Troy Ounces. Coins are usually just a little bit heavier than their printed weight. So for example, if you have a 1 ounce silver bullion, usually the weight will be about 31.2 grams or 31.3 grams. If the weight is 31.0 grams or lower, and it has not been worn by being in circulation, you are almost guaranteed that it's a fake. The same apply if the weight was much higher than what is printed. In the case of constitutional silver and other coins that were in circulation, the opposite is often true. Because they are worn, they should weigh less than what they did when they were new. So if you have a constitutional coin that is worn and that is overweight, again, you are sure it's a fake. So, to resume, if the coin is of correct weight, of correct dimension, and is not magnetic, it is pretty much impossible for it to be a fake. This rule only applies to bullion, bars, and rounds that have no numismatic value. For numismatic coins, it's completely different. You can still have a fake that's made of the same metal, have the correct dimensions and everything, but not be a real thing. Method number six, the specific gravity test. This test will tell you the density of the metal, thus the type of metal the coin is made of. For this test, you will need a cup of water, deep enough to submerge the coin without it touching the edges or the bottom. You also need a piece of string and a precise scale. This is a very good test to do at home, but it's very difficult to do in a public place. So it's not as useful when you're trying to make the purchase, when it is most important to do the test. I will publish a video on this method tomorrow, guiding you through every step. All is left is one more method. Method number seven, precious metal testers. There are various types of machines on the market to test precious metals. One of them is the mass spectrometer and the other one is the precious metal tester. All these machines are very expensive and are out of reach for most stackers and precious metal investors. You will generally see them at coin shops and places specialized in purchasing precious metals for melting. One of the machines you are likely to see is the Sigma Tester. Here's a short video that explains how it works. To begin, turn the unit on with the button on the lower right. The display will come up and the sensor light will illuminate. The display reads Remove Sample, Push Run Cal Start. Be sure all metals are removed from the sensor area, then press the button that says Run Cal. The green ready light will come on. As you can see, at this point, pure gold is automatically selected and the display reads ready, play sample. Here we have a buffalo gold coin. Place it on the sensor and the display shows the black cursor between the brackets, indicating the metal is within range and most likely gold. When this counterfeit gold bullion is placed on the sensor, an arrow pointing to the right appears and the precious metal verifier lets you know the sample is not consistent with gold. Now we are going to change the type of alloy being tested. The precious metal verifier offers several gold alloys to choose from. We have an American Gold Eagle here. Use the arrow key to choose the appropriate alloy, hit Run Cal, and place the sample. The cursor box appears between the brackets, just a pinch to the left, and as mentioned earlier, as long as the box is within the brackets, it is consistent with the expected metal. Let's test a different metal type. The precious metal verifier tests gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium. Press the down arrow twice to get to the next metal, in this case silver. Here is an American Eagle which is 99.9%, .9%, so we press the right arrow to get to that alloy, hit Run Cal, and then place the sample. Notice that this is in an NGC case, but that's not a problem, the verifier can still read through it, and there is that cursor again right between the brackets indicating this is a consistent sample. A wand must be attached for smaller and thinner coins, such as this quarter ounce maple leaf. Attach the wand in the side port. Notice the green sensor light has changed to indicate the wand is the active sensor. 
The display reads remove sample, push run cow, so push the round cow button and then the sensor will be ready. Now select your metal, in this case pure gold, and press run cow. Then you're ready to measure. You can leave the wand plugged in and use the sensor button to choose between the two sensors. I hope this information was useful to you. If you liked it, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.